so in this course uh, we're going to talk about what you need to do to your python code to make it a little bit more production ready and and uh, implement some of the other kind of features that are outside of the business logic um, and so a lot of new programmers they they write their code and they put it in a file and they test it to make sure that it works uh, but then they don't really implement uh, anything that would make it easy to run and deploy to production. So in this course, we're going to start out with a small uh, little word counter app that we're going to write as, as, as a new programmer would. would. Uh, and then we're going to go through and we're going to make some changes to the app and we're going to implement some of the features that you would see in a production grade um, script or application. So in this case, um, I have a text of Alice in Wonderland in the parent directory to here. Uh, I got it from Project Gutenberg. And so uh, let's go ahead and write a small um, word counter app as uh, somebody who's kind of new to programming might, might write it. Um, so we have our, our, our file here. Uh, and then the, the initial implementations, let's go ahead and just you know read the file. We're going to parse it. Uh, line by line, we're going to split each line on the word and then, uh, you know, just count all the unique words, right? That will be our first kind of initial implementation. So we've opened file path as F for line in F dot relines. And then, uh, Let's go ahead and just print it out to the screen for now. Let me go ahead and run it. All right, so we got our our cat command pretty much done. All right, so now we're going to get the actual words. And let's go ahead and print it out. All right. And so now we have a list of uh, we have a list of of words. Let me see that we have some uh, new lines. And we also have some empty lines with new lines right here. So let's go ahead and um, filter these out. Print it again. Okay, good enough. We still have some empty lists, but we don't care about that for now. And we're also not going to care about punctuations or stemming or anything like that. Um, again, this is just a, a very kind of crude example. Okay, and so now we need a data structure to keep track of our words. Um, and so we're going to do something like this for word in words. If word in words. Words is equal to one. Else, equals one. All right. And so let's just make sure it doesn't air out. Okay, so it looks fine. And so now uh, we should have this this dictionary here that's going to be counting all the words. And so after this, we can say okay. Uh, let's print out like the, you know, top. Uh, I don't know, let's print any word that occurs more than like let's say two hundred times. Uh, so for word and words, you know, if words word if a counter is greater than two hundred, go ahead and print it out. So let's see what we get. Okay, so Alice, uh, and then just some of the some of the basic uh, words like off in. Okay, uh, so now let's go ahead and jazz it up a little bit. So let's say we wanted to have our top words. Uh, so these are the top words that we're going to that are in this text, and we're going to um, essentially just sort uh, that dictionary and uh, make a list out of the top terms. So sorted. Where's that items? 
we can use a, a lambda function here to go through all the words uh, and then just print out just the top ones so print top words all right so you can see it's been sorted um, in in the reverse order so the numbers are going from the, sm the count is going from the smallest to the highest so to reverse the order we can pass reverse equals true uh, and then if we wanted to let's say get the just the, the top five words uh, we can go through and just ask it for the top five so let's get what the top five are so the empty space and two and a and so technically this program uh, works fine right we can well we, we know that we have uh, you know a text file we parse it create a data structure here um, and then we, we get the top five words but there, there's some improvements that we can make here um, so for example um, a lot of this code that I, I've written here is already implemented as part of the Python standard library and so and that's kind of one of the, the mistakes and one of the points of this lesson is, you know, look into the standard library to see if you can use some of the objects and some of the stuff that's already in there. So um, in this case, we're going to use the counter object from the collections library. So from collections, we're going to import counter. Um, and then um, what we can do with counter, we can go ahead and make a new counter here. Or actually let's make it down here uh, and we can pass the words to it and then we can uh, let's say print counter so counter has a method called most common and so that will give you uh, let's say five of the most common words so let's go ahead and print that and we get the same exact output uh, so counter will keep track of the occurrences of different words um, and so this is one of the ways to use it um, and then we can uh, implement this in a slightly still yet a slightly better way um, so let's go ahead and um, so in this scenario we're just taking all the data and we're passing it to the counter uh, after we already counted it up ourselves but you know if you look at the documentation the counter can actually be used in a slightly different way right so I can initialize it here and it can actually be my data structure so here what I can do instead of having all of this stuff right here I can just say counter dot update and I can pass the words to it and then let's run it again and we get exactly the same output um, and so I guess th that's our initial implementation of a script. And you know, if I ask somebody like an intern at work to write, this is probably something that they would come up with. Um, not really something that's ready to go to production. Um, but you know, a lot of these other things that we're gonna cover in the next lessons, they don't really generally teach you some of these things in programming courses. All right, so we have our basic implementation here. Uh, I'm gonna stop right here for this video. Um, and then look at the next video for uh, what are we going to do to jazz this thing up.